there is no monster. You searched everywhere, under the bed, in the closets, in the basement. You looked for it during the day when the light could have illuminated clues of its presence. You searched at night in complete darkness, hoping that if you reach out your hand, someone would have taken it. But there is no monster. In the morning, when you wake up, you examine your legs for bruises and scratches, and you are disappointed to notice that your skin seems untouched. When you leave the house, first you stop to take a picture of each room, so that on your return you can check if something has been moved, but nothing ever changes. Maybe, you think, when you leave, so does the monster. And so even when you're walking down the street, you turn to see if it's following you. Maybe a few steps away. Maybe hidden in your shadow. But it's not. The only thing you see are the worried looks of passers-by. And, every once in a while, your own reflection in the shop windows. At work, you can't concentrate. You have cameras installed in your house, and now all you can do is watch the recordings on your computer. You know how you must look, obsessive, disturbing, while you stare at the monitor with intensity. But you need to check in case the monster shows up. In your heart, however, you know that nothing will ever appear, because there is no monster. But you have to make sure. You have to know. Because if there's no monster, then why are you so afraid? Your eyes burn after spending so much time in front of the screen. So you go to the bathroom to wash your face. You're hoping the monster won't come out while you're gone. You look at your reflection. You look terrible. Your eyes are red and swollen. You're pale. You barely recognize yourself. Maybe you should talk to someone. But who? Everyone will think you're crazy. And maybe you are crazy. Would you be able to recognize it if you were? Would you be able to understand that you are losing touch with reality? A crazy person would not think like this. You tell yourself. A crazy person would think they're okay. And you're not Okay. You go back to your computer. If you go on like that, they will fire you. That would be kind of nice. In the cafeteria, you try to eat, but every bite turns into sand under your tongue, and you feel like throwing up. When you finally get home, you're exhausted. But you force yourself to look around, to stay alert. Because if you let go, you'll start to feel how fast your heart is beating, and you wouldn't be able to take it. You do your usual routine. You look under the bed, nothing. In the closets, nothing. You go down to the basement, and you're so tired you almost fall down the stairs. Nothing. You're slow, your mind is clouded, and your steps echo down the hall. Maybe it's a sign, but more likely not. At this point, you would take anything. Lights that turn on and off by themselves, objects that move thanks to invisible forces, the water of the sink turning to blood. You don't care, as long as you can see it with your own two eyes. You have dinner alone, because no one wants to live with someone who's looking for a monster that doesn't exist. Then you go to the bathroom. You're in front of the mirror, again. You look at yourself and you think, when is this going to end? Your reflection responds, why do you think it will end? Your heart is beating so fast you think you're going to die. You're so tired of looking for something that's not there. So you go to sleep. And the next day you start over. Bed, closet, basement. You take a picture of the room and check that the cameras are still working. Before you go out, you look in the mirror. 
and you see you've aged. You go out, you go to work, you go home. Bed, closet, basement. You have dinner, then throw up everything you ate. When you go to the bathroom, you look at the mirror for a long time. When did you change yourself? You look so different. You sleep, and why not? There is no monster to worry about anyways. You wake up and you start over. As you go to work, you walk past the shop windows, and for a moment, there seems to be two of you. That evening, you go to dinner with your parents. Your mother says she's worried about you. You've lost weight, she says, and you seem absent. You can't tell her the truth, so you tell her you're having trouble at work. Which is true, because every time you clock in, you feel like you're dying. You used to have dreams, aspirations, friends. What do you have now? The same life every day. Bed, closet, basement, again and again and again. <laughs> There's no damn monster. Now when you look in the mirror, your reflection looks back with pity. Time flows slowly as you do the same thing every single day. Do you remember what you dreamed of becoming as a child? A superhero? A vet? A dancer, maybe? But here you are, slave of time, trampled by routine. Maybe things can still change. Maybe you can still break the cycle. But when you look in the mirror, your reflection laughs at you. Doppelganger. The double. In Finnish folklore, the doppelganger can be seen performing an action before the person has done it. It can be understood as an omen of the future. Johann Wolfgang van Gott saw his double while riding horseback to Drussenheim. In his autobiography, he recounted that he saw his double riding towards him, dressed in clothes he did not own. Eight years later, he found himself again on that same path, wearing, coincidentally, the clothes he had seen on his double years before. Gott saw his own double as though he was seeing himself in the future. Like a premonition. The poet... Percy Shelley also saw his doppelganger several times, the last being just before his ship sank. Allegedly, his doppelganger would haunt him and say, How long do you expect to be content?